Welcome back guys. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you another design that I came up with for a three picket planter. So this is the farmhouse three picket planter. A couple of weeks ago, I dropped one that took off. Everybody loved it. I had tons of DMs, tons of messages of people selling these things like crazy. So decided let's keep on rolling with this. Just like I've taught you before, when something is hot, when something is in, you change it up just a little bit just to make it a little bit different than what other people are selling or what other people are doing. Put your twist to it and sell them. And as always, if you are the type of person that actually likes to have the plants in your hand while you're doing this, I will be putting this in my Etsy shop. But I will be teaching you in this video, step by step, everything that you need to do to make these farmhouse three picket planters. So what makes these so awesome is right now lumber prices are so high that people cannot afford to build a nice planter or really a nice anything for a reasonable price. So like we discussed a couple weeks ago with our original three picket planter, that's when you start to think, what can I do to solve this problem? Again, our problem was lumber is expensive. The solution was, fence pickets were not. They did not go up with the price of inflation of the lumber. So fence pickets in my area are still $1.98 a piece. I just now checked. $1.98 for a treated pine, and that's what these boxes are built out of. Or you can build them out of cedar for $3.99 a picket. So it's just gonna double your cost. It's gonna be up to you, but you can market it for a lot higher. As of this morning, this is what a big box store is selling their cedar, almost identical to this, except a little more plain and it's actually smaller that box is 12 by 12 these are 16 by 16. yeah over 100 bucks or if you wanted to add an extra picket you could make this yeah over 300 bucks i don't know who's buying them for that but it's it's insane so anyway so again like i said i redesigned it it took me three different prototypes to finally get it down to where i can make this with three fence pickets only and this is what i came up with they're super cool they make awesome gifts for anyone and i thought of something else actually my mother came up with this idea so i have to give her the credit and these are a mother's day gift so uh, nobody ruined the surprise she had seen in a magazine or she had seen somewhere that people were making this style of a box for christmas tree stands so this is no longer a seasonal item so now you have an item that is hot an item that is affordable to build and now you have two different seasons that you can actually market this for. So you have your spring, flowers, all of that good stuff. And then once that's over, that's when you start production for winter now. Now these are Christmas tree boxes. Okay. Instead of people putting the, whatever it's called, the cloth thing that goes underneath of the tree, whatever it is, putting that under there, they're putting them in these boxes, in these stands, to hold their Christmas tree up. Now, you may have to do just a little bit of modification in order to make that happen. Okay, this is gonna be for your fall build. And you can market it for that, okay? Again, a big part of any type of business is the marketing. Marketing is key. So, you can actually tell the customer or have a sign or however that you are deciding to sell this. This is a garden planter box, but in the wintertime, you can do this and actually stage up a Christmas tree inside of one of these boxes. Or you can show them a picture, you know, kind of like this of what it would look like with a uh, Christmas tree in a box like this. Great idea, and it actually came from my mother. Always listen to your mom. So in the last video, I got a lot of comments of people telling me that the screws were too expensive. The inch and a quarter pocket hole screws. So this build is not a pocket joinery build. So we are actually gonna be using deck screws for this, and I'm gonna be using one inch. So your typical fence picket is five eighths inch thick. So we are actually using a one inch deck screw. And yes, they're harder to find. I'm gonna try my hardest to link some. The issue is if you use a regular screw, they will rust and the treatment can actually break down the screw without this type of a coating. I'll either post this, if I can find some of these. I actually purchased these at my local Lowe's. They were $10 for 320 screws. No complaints there. And this is a PowerPro brand, okay? Um, so check out your uh, local hardware store, or if I can find some, I will link them. If I cannot find any to link, because a lot of people do not have a local hardware store, uh, your next best bet will probably be like a galvanized screw. And uh, I know that they sell these on Amazon. I'll throw a link for those as well in a one inch. So, so that was some of the issues that people had mentioned in the comments. 
to why did I pick this design? Like we discussed, the planners right now are hot. People are buying them. I'm getting tons and tons of comments, messages where people are buying them before they can build them. You already have that design that I taught a couple weeks ago. So while spring is still hot, I wanted to go ahead and get out another design. That way you could have time to make these, get these out. Anything that is X-Frame, I call it farmhouse. A lot of people call it X-Frame. It's in. People love to see this on their porch. This is a much simpler build than the other one, and you can actually make these a lot faster. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you the jigs, how to make jigs if you're going to mass produce this. I got a ton of questions with a garden trellis on how to make the jig. So in this video, I'll actually walk through and teach you how I made these jigs, or if you can see them to expedite this build. So like we have discussed, if we are mass producing anything, jigs are essential. They will cut your time in half. You know, I typically wouldn't make a jig just for a couple of boxes, but I wanted to be able to teach you how to make the jig in case you wanted to make 10 or 20 or 50, 100, whatever you want to do. Just FYI guys, anytime I do builds like this for the Make Money with Woodworking series, I will maybe a few days later post an edited down version of it just for folks that maybe want to make one you know maybe want to make a couple and they're not interested in all of the pre stuff like this where we discuss marketing we discuss sales things like that the marketing and the sales for this is going to be just like the other so i'm not going to be repeating that except for the fact that we've added a marketing point for this version you can use the exact same design make them wider shorter still use this x frame and make christmas tree boxes again like the other ones these are not small i mean these are big 16 by 16 boxes so not a cheap flimsy product like you see at the big box stores that is only put together with staples and another thing that i got a lot of questions on is can i use just staples can i use just pin nails can i use just bread nails Absolutely, you can. The big box stores do it all the time. But another thing that we discuss is the quality of your product is your name. And the only one that can destroy or ruin your name is you. So if you put out a product that falls apart halfway through the spring or through the summer because there's too much moisture and movement of the wood, you just put little pin nails in it and it falls apart and the customer's $50 flowers go everywhere. They're gonna tell people about it. They're probably gonna put it on social media and then there goes your reputation. I had so many people telling me, you know, that it was an added cost and it wasn't worth it. To each their own. As for me, any product that I send out there is gonna be the highest quality that I can make. Also with this design, you can change it up as well. You see this little trellis thingy behind me? This is a prototype. Let me move this out of the way. This is just something that I was messing around with. Essentially, I added a trellis to one of these boxes just to see what it would do. And this is just a cedar one. Just wanted to try different things just to see what they would look like. And that is all part of prototyping and coming up with the best product to sell. You put the time, you put the work into it, people will purchase your items. But this is basically, like I was saying, just a trellis. Some people will love it, some people will hate it. That's just the way that it is. But it is an option that you can make. This is just screwed in. The trellis is actually a separate piece. You could have it there and drop it in if they wanted it, put a couple screws in it and you're done. Or send it with them whenever they purchase it. I will not be talking about how to build that during this video. It was just something that I was messing around with some scraps just a couple of days ago. So it's gonna be one that you're gonna have to figure out on your own. One other note to keep in mind when you're building anything with fence pickets is they're not always consistent. They're not always exactly 5 8 Some of them are 16 thick, some of them are 16 shy. So just keep that in mind. In the dimensions, they're gonna be five and a half inches wide. Not all of these fence pickets are exactly five and a half. Most of them are actually a little thick. So they're actually like a five and five eighths. If I say five and a half in the description, that's five and a half. So don't just, you know, slice the pickets. You actually need to run them through the table saw, knock off that little edge because it will make a difference in the end. So let's get started. So to start out, let's just take our three fence pickets and this can be pine or cedar. I would recommend pine if you're planning on painting them because it's a lot cheaper and we're just going to sand them down. Now we're just cutting our parts for our parts list. 
That parts list can be found in the description of this video and it will tell you the exact lengths that you need to build this project. So do you notice the blue tape that I have on this? And what I'm doing is actually batching these parts together. But the blue tape is just my parts numbers. This just helps me keep everything organized. There are two different types of walls for this build. There's going to be wall A and wall B. And there'll be four total, so two of each. As I mentioned in the last planner box video, I like to put these into kits. And then I just label my kits A and B. I'm using an L square to keep everything, well, square. So I'm going to start with an A panel and I'm laying out the legs for that and they will be labeled leg A in the description. I'm also using two cross boards A and measuring up an inch and a half from the bottom. And I actually make jigs for this build so I'll be giving you the spacing measurements as well as teaching you how to make this jig as we go. So on a scrap piece of quarter inch ply I already have marked out an inch and a half since I know that's what my bottom spacing will be for every one of these panels. So using two parts labeled back wall and one labeled middle wall, we'll put those into place. The outer wall is an inch and three eighths from the edge and I've already put that on my jig. And we want all of our wall parts one inch from the top and I put that on my jig as well. For assembly purposes, I'm gonna be using one inch brad nails for this project just to hold everything into place while I'm working with it. You can also use exterior wood glue if you would like, but this will be held together with one inch deck screws. We'll get to that in a bit. Since this will be on the inside of the planner, I'm not too worried about the nails. So as you can see with everything held together with the brads, we can now handle the part without worrying about things coming out of line. And now for the screw installation. I'm measuring up one half of an inch and then I'm just going to draw a line and make my marks for the best screw placement to hold everything together. And on my jig, I've already done this step, so this would not be necessary if you were using the jig. I'm using one inch coated deck screws for this project. If you cannot find these, you can also use one inch galvanized screws. So since the next step will be pre-drilling these holes, I'm just measuring out my drill bit depth. And I'll be using this jig for the drill guide. And don't worry, I will be teaching you how to make this whole jig for the next panel. Since the bottom wall spacing is the exact as the top, I can just flip the jig over and use the same holes. Now let's get these screws installed. Now we just need the X-frame, but I'm gonna hold off on that. So I'm gonna show you what this panel A assembly would have looked like with just using the jig. I will have the step-by-step -step build plans in my Etsy shop linked in my description if you'd like to have the plans in hand. But I will not include the plans for these jigs because I'm about to teach you how to make them. And now our second panel A is done and just needs the X-frame. Now let's assemble our panels B. And for this we'll be using all of our parts labeled B. So we want to lay everything out exactly like we did for the panel A. And we have to lay out everything with exact measurements before we actually make our jig. So one and a half inches from the bottom, one inch from the top, and the side will be the only thing that will be different from panel A. The sides will measure 11 sixteenths from the outside edge. So once everything is in place, let's go ahead and tack everything down and now we can actually start to make our jig. I'm using scrap quarter inch plywood and I'm going to cut it to the width of my wall. Now I'm just going to place it over my back wall and measure this out just as I did for panel A. So a half of an inch up and marks for my screw placement. Now let's go ahead and drill out our marks with the same settings as we did for panel A. And once you're done with this end, just flip it directly over and repeat for the opposite end. Now I'm just copying the leg inset onto my jig. And I'll just label that side of my jig side. Now on one end of the jig, I will be copying the inch and a half spacing from the end of the leg to the crossboard. And I'm just going to label this bottom. And we know that our spacing from the top is one inch, so let's go ahead and get that on our jig. And we'll just label it top. And here's a completed jig B. I'm going to freeze frame this in case you want to screenshot this for later on. Now we'll just finish up this panel B with some screws. And I'll show you how smooth the next panel B goes just by using the jig that we just made. And here we go, jig only. Now I'm going to show you something here. So this is a tip. If you'll notice where I'm holding my finger, I'm holding this bottom board down. That way whenever I'm pushing in from the top, it does not move the bottom board. 
Okay, so you get the point. Jigs make everything easier. So let's move on to the X frame. So for panel A, I'm gonna call this long X A. So using the part from the description, I'm just gonna put a 35 degree angle on one end, slide it straight down, and put a 35 degree on the other. Fits right in. And now for the two parts labeled short XA. I'm simply gonna keep the saw at 35 degrees, make that cut, change the saw to 21 degrees, and then simply flip the board over. And now with all of our X parts cut, we can go ahead and assemble. And I would recommend gluing this and brad nailing. That should be all that you need because these are just decorative pieces. So we will repeat this process for our second panel A, and then let's move on to panel B. So long XB will be cut at 36 degrees on each end, and short XB will be 36 degrees on one end and 18 degrees on the other. And we will just repeat the installation of this X frame as we did for panels A. So now we have all four panels made. Let's put this thing together. Okay, so panels B will actually sit inside of the lip of panel A. And what I'm going to do is just attach it with brad nails again, just for handling purposes. We will put some screws in this. And we will just repeat for all four sides. But keep in mind, the screws and the nails will only be going into panels A. And you can always tell someone that's had a nail driven into their finger when they do this. Check out those fingers. They will automatically get out of the way once the pressure of the nail gun is holding the piece in place. And here's an example of a well-executed thumb tuck. I think it should be an Olympic event. Now for the screw placement on the leg, I want it at two, eight, and 12. And I'm also measuring in three eighths of an inch. And since I will be doing this three more times, I'm actually gonna make another jig. The exact same measurements and we'll be using this for the screw placement all the way around. We'll be using the exact same screws that we use for the rest of the build. Now we can pre-drill and install our screws for all of our panels A. Again, panels A will be the only ones that will have screws. Again, another example of how a simple jig can make things go so much faster. And when we're done with the jig, I'm gonna go ahead and label it as well. And there's the three jigs that you need to make this planner. Simple as that. So let's get these bottom boards on. This will actually help to support and square this up. We're just going to center the first one and the other two, we're gonna place them four inches from center. Then just pre-drill, nail, screw. Now for our top boards or our top trim. These will all be on 45 degree angles. So for installing the top boards, I'm gonna be leaving 7 eighths of an inch in all directions. I'll just tack all of these top boards into place and get ready to pre-drill and place my screws. I use the screw placement of two, eight, and 16. And lastly, my favorite part, let's sand everything down to make it nice and smooth. Make sure to hit the corners really well. And that's it. Now she's ready for paint, stain, or you can leave it natural. And that's it, guys. It's as simple as that. Do not wait on me to put these kind of videos out. Or if you come up with a good idea, start sketching it out. Start drawing it up. So with the risk of it not working out in your head the way that you think it will, comes great reward when it finally does. So you've got this, guys. So thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to smash that subscribe button for more. I've got tons of this stuff coming and there will be more and more. So your homework for this week, try to think of something, try to design something of your own in your head that would sell. Something that you think that would be hot based loosely off of other things that are hot. Sketch it out, go to town. So until next time guys, go out there, make some of these planter boxes and make some money. We'll see ya.